Okay, so once again, this time our topic is for about uh, ANOVA. No? So, of course, uh, we have two uh, different, uh, we have actually one way and two way ANOVA, right? No? So, this is defined by how many independent variables are, are included in the ANOVA test. So, one way means the analysis of variance that has one independent variable. Only one independent variable. That is ANOVA. Two-way means that test has two independent variables. So an example of this may be the independent variable being a brand of drink or independent variables of brand of drinks and how many calories it has or whether it is original or diet. Okay? So uh, actually, you know, ANOVA can compare the means of different groups and shows you if there are any statistical difference between the means. So ANOVA is classified as an omnibus test statistic. So this means that it can tell you which specific groups were statistically significantly different from each other, only that at least two of the, of the groups were. So it is important to remember that the main ANOVA research question is whether the sample means are from different populations, and there are two assumptions upon which ANOVA test. Okay. First, of course, whatever the technique of data collection, the observation within each sample population are normally distributed. And second, the sample population has a common variance of standard deviation. Okay, to, to discuss with us the details about the ANOVA, let us all welcome our presenter. Good day, everyone. My topic is about ANOVA or analysis of variance. When it comes to research, in the field of business, economics, psychology, sociology, biology, and others, the analysis of variance, shortly known as ANOVA, is an extremely important tool for analysis of data. It is a technique employed by the researcher to make a comparison between more than two populations and help in performing simultaneous tests. What is an ANOVA test? It is a statistical test that compares the means of groups in order to determine if there is a difference between them. It is used in statistics when testing a hypothesis to understand how different groups and respond to each other by making connections between independent and dependent variables. ANOVA was developed by Sir Ronald A. Fisher, hence it is also referred as Fisher's ANOVA. It extends the T and the Z test, which have the problem of only allowing the nominal level variable to have two categories. Since T test and Z test are used to compare only things, researchers will have to run multiple T tests to come up with an outcome, while that is not the case with the ANOVA test. That is why the ANOVA test is also considered as the extension of T test and Z test. Here are some examples in using an ANOVA test. First, a researcher might test students from multiple colleges to see if students from one of the colleges consistently outperform students from the other colleges. Another example, in a business application, an R&D researcher might test two different processes of creating a product to see if one process is better than the other in terms of cost efficiency. There are two types of ANOVA that are commonly used, the one-way ANOVA and the two-way ANOVA. One-way ANOVA is a hypothesis test in which only one categorical variable or single factor is considered. It is a technique which enables researchers to make a comparison of means of three or more samples with the help of F distribution. It is used to find out the difference among its different categories having several possible values. For example, researchers might be studying the effects of tea on weight loss and form three groups, the green tea, black tea, and no tea. By comparing the weight loss for the three groups, the researcher can find out if the effects were significant on them. 
there are two possible hypotheses in a one-way ANOVA. First is the null hypothesis, and second, the alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis states that there is no difference between the groups and equality between means. So in our previous example, the null hypothesis is that there is no difference in the effect of T on weight loss. On the other hand, the alternative hypothesis is that there is a difference between the means and groups. Therefore, the alternative hypothesis from the given example is that there is a difference on the effect of T on weight loss. The assumptions of a one-way ANOVA are the following. First, the normal distribution of the population from which the samples are drawn. Next, the measurement of the dependent variable is at interval or ratio level. Next, there are two or more than categorical independent groups in an independent variable. Next, independence of samples. And last, the homogeneity of the variance of the population. The next type of ANOVA, which is the two-way ANOVA, is a hypothesis test wherein the classification of data is based on two factors. It examines the effect of the two factors on the continuous dependent variable. It also studies the interrelationship between independent variables influencing the values of the dependent variable, if any. It is used by the researcher to compare several levels or conditions of the two independent variables involving multiple observations at each level. For example, a business fear may have its sales data classified on the basis of different salesmen and also on the basis of sales in different regions. Next, the agricultural output may be classified on the basis of different varieties of seeds and also on the basis of different varieties of fertilizers used. There are two types of two-way ANOVA. The first one is a two-way ANOVA with replication, and the second one is the two-way ANOVA without replication. The two-way ANOVA with replication is performed when there are two groups and the members of these groups are doing more than one thing. For example, the two groups of patients from different hospitals trying two different therapies. While the two-way ANOVA without replication is used when you have only one group but you are double testing that group. For example, testing one set of individuals before and after they take a medication to see if it works or not. There are three pairs of null or alternative hypothesis for the two-way ANOVA. First, there is no difference in group means at any level of the first independent variable. Next, there is no difference in group means at any level of the second independent variable. And last, the effect of one independent variable does not depend on the effect of the other independent variable. Assumptions of a two-way ANOVA are the following. First, normal distribution of the population from which the samples are drawn. Second, measurement of dependent variable at continuous level. Third, two or more than two categorical independent groups in two factors. Next, categorical independent groups should have the same size. Next, independence of observations. And last, homogeneity of the variance of the population. The key differences between one-way and two-way ANOVA are summarized in this table. So one-way ANOVA is defined as a test that allows one to make comparisons between the means of three or more groups of data, while the two-way ANOVA is a test that allows one to make comparisons between the means of three or more groups of data where two independent variables are considered. So the number of independent variables in a one-way ANOVA is 1, while 2 for the two-way ANOVA. So what is being compared for the one-way ANOVA? 
it is the means of three or more groups of an independent variable on a dependent variable, while for the two-way ANOVA, the effect of multiple groups of two independent variables on a dependent variable and on each other. The complication of ANOVA problem are usually summarized in tabular form as shown in the table. So this table is referred to as the one-way ANOVA source table. So as we have observed, there are different headers here, namely the source, sum of squares, degrees of freedom, mean of square, F statistic, P value, and F critical. Source is where the variation comes from. It could be between or within. The between group is also called as the treatment group. It refers to the variations between the distribution of individual groups or levels as the values within each group are different. The within group, sometimes called the error group, refers to the variations caused by differences within individual groups or levels as not all the values within each group are the same. Next, the sum of squares. It is the sum of the standard deviations from the mean. Each number in the sum of squares followed is a variation. So in statistics, sum of squares is defined as statistical technique that is used in regression analysis to determine the dispersion of data points. In the ANOVA test, it is used in computing the value of F. So this will be the formula to calculate the sum of squares between the sum of squares within, and the sum of these two gives the sum of total squares. Next, the degrees of freedom. It refers to the maximum numbers of logically independent values that have the freedom to vary in a data set. For the degrees of freedom between groups, it is calculated as number of groups minus 1. For the degrees of freedom within groups, Subtract degrees of freedom for groups from the total degrees of freedom. Next, the mean of square. It is obtained by dividing each sum of squares with corresponding degrees of freedom. F statistic. It measures the extent of difference between the means of different samples or how significantly the means differ. It is the ratio of mean of square between and mean of square within. This F statistic calculated is compared with the F critical value for making a conclusion. If the value of the calculated F statistic is more than the F critical value or for a specific alpha or significance level, then we reject the null hypothesis and can say that the treatment had a significant effect. The p-value, it is the smallest level of significance that would lead to the rejection of the null hypothesis. If the p-value is less than or equal to alpha or significance level, then reject the null hypothesis. But if the p-value is greater than alpha or significance level, then fail to reject the null hypothesis. The steps for computing a one-way ANOVA are the following. First is to establish the hypothesis, the null hypothesis, and the alternate hypothesis. Second, calculate the ANOVA table with degrees of freedom. Calculate for the group, error, and total sum of squares given the formulas. Third is to determine the critical value this is the F critical value from the F distribution table. And last, draw the statistical conclusion. If the F calculated is less than F critical, then fail to reject the null hypothesis. And if the F calculated is greater than F critical, reject the null hypothesis. Here's an example problem for calculating a one-way ANOVA. A car manufacturer certainly planning to conduct the test to know the performance of three different brands of 12V batteries, so
So he selected 5 batteries from each brand and discharged them under controlled condition. Assuming the lifetime of batteries are normally distributed at 95% confidence level. This is the data which illustrates 3 different brands of 12B batteries with bat 5 batteries for each brand. So for step 1, the hypotheses are the following. The null hypothesis is that there is no difference between 3 brands mean lifetime while the alternate hypothesis is that at least one of the brand mean life is different from the others. For the second step, this will be the computation for the ANOVA table with degrees of freedom, calculation for the group error and total sum of squares. For the third and last step, with the alpha or significance level at 5%, we determine the critical value for F with degrees of freedom of 2 and 12 in the F distribution table, which is 3.89. So for the conclusion, since the F calculated is greater than F critical, hence we may have to reject the null hypothesis. So calculated value does lie in the critical region. Therefore, there is evidence at the 5% significance level that the mean lifetime of the three brands of batteries do differ. We can also use Microsoft Excel for an easier way of performing or calculating a one-way ANOVA. So these are the steps. For step 1, input the data into columns or rows in Excel. For step 2, click the data tab and then click Data Analysis. If you don't see Data Analysis, load the Data Analysis Tool Pack add-in. Step 3, click ANOVA Single Factor and then click OK. Step 4, type an input range into the input range box. Check the labels in first row. If we have the column headers and select the rows radio button if the data is in rows. For step 5, select an output range. For example, click the new worksheet radio button. And for step 6, choose an alpha level. So for most hypothesis tests, 0.05 is the standard. And for step 7, click OK. The results from ANOVA will appear in the worksheet. So this is the one-way ANOVA test result using the Microsoft Excel. And this is the one-way ANOVA test result for the manual computation. Two-way ANOVA computation. So the steps for computing the two-way ANOVA are the following. First, establish the hypothesis. The null hypothesis for each of the sets are given below. First, the population means of the first factor are equal. This is like the one-way ANOVA for the row factor. Next, the population means of the second factor are equal. This is like the one-way ANOVA for the column factor. And last, there is no interaction between the two factors. This is similar to performing a test for independent speed contingency tables. Second, calculate the test statistic and rejection region by computing for the sum of squares A or row factor, sum of squares B or column factor, sum of squares within and error, and sum of squares total. Third step, calculate the sum of squares interaction. Fourth, calculate the ANOVA table with degrees of freedom and F value. And the fifth step, determine the critical value. Remember, F critical is from the F distribution table. And finally, draw the statistical conclusion. If the F calculated is less than the F critical, fail to reject the null hypothesis, 
and if the F calculated is greater than the F critical, reject the null hypothesis. So this is the two-way ANOVA source table with the formulas for computing the sum of squares, this degrees of freedom, mean of square, and F statistic. For A is the number of levels in factor A, B is the number of levels in factor B, R is equal to the total number of trials, X sub I is the mean of the I factor level of factor A, X is the overall mean of all observations, X sub J is the mean of the J factor level of factor B, X sub I J is the mean of observations at the I level of factor A and the J level of factor B. Here's a sample problem for computing a two-way ANOVA. A researcher conducting an experiment to check the effectiveness of coating, a new coating applied to two different materials, and also research conducted at two different laboratories. For instance, each laboratory tested five samples from each of the treated materials. So this is the table that shows the data from the example. Using the given formulas, we can compute for the sum of squares A row factor, sum of squares B column factor, sum of square interaction, sum of square within or error, and the sum of squares total. And also, the calculation of the ANOVA table with degrees of freedom, mean of square, and F statistic. From the F distribution table using the 5% significance level, we determine the critical value for F with degrees of freedom 1 and 16 is 4.49. It appears that both laboratory and material, the F calculated is greater than F critical, hence we reject the null hypothesis. But for the interaction, the F calculated is less than F critical, hence fail to reject the null hypothesis. These are the steps to perform two-way ANOVA using the Microsoft Excel. Step 1, click the Data tab and then click Data Analysis. If you don't see the Data Analysis option, install the Data Analysis Tool Pack. Step 2, click ANOVA Tool Factor with or without replication and then click OK. The two-way ANOVA window will open. Step 3, type an input range into the input range box. Make sure you include all of your data, including headers and group names. Step 4, type a number in the rows per sample box. Rows per sample is actually a bit misleading. What this is asking you is how many individuals are in each group. For example, if you have 5 individuals in each age group, you would type 5 into the rows per sample box. For step 5, select an output range. For example, click the new worksheet radio button to display the data in a new worksheet. Step 6, select an alpha level. So in most cases, an alpha level of 5% works for most tests. Step 7, click OK to run the two-way ANOVA. The data will be returned in your specified output range. For the last step, read the results to figure out if you are going to reject the null hypothesis or not. You'll basically be looking at two factors. If the F value is larger than the F critical value or if the P value is smaller than your chosen alpha level. Using the same sample problem for computing the two-way ANOVA from the previous slide, now this is the result of performing the two-way ANOVA using the Microsoft Excel. That would be all for my report. Thank you and God bless.
Okay, uh, thank you very much, madam. Okay, so I just want to share no, the way on how we'll be able to uh, have an actual uh, demonstrations of using Excel of our test. No? Uh -huh. Okay, again, uh, as I mentioned earlier, no, a t-test is a type of inferential statistics no, used to determine if there is a significant difference between the means of two groups, which uh, may be related in certain features. And it is mostly used when the data sets, like the data set recorded, as the outcome from flipping a coins, for example, of 100 times, no, would follow a normal distribution and may have unknown variances. So a t-test is used as hypothesis testing tool, which allowing testing of an assumptions applicable to a population. So a t-test at the uh, t statistics, the t distribution values, and the degrees of freedom to determine the statistical significance. So to conduct a test with three or more means, one must, must use an analysis of variance. Actually, so I have here a sample of a video presentation on how we'll be able to compute a, a t-test using Microsoft Excel. Hypothesis testing using Excel's data analysis tool. In this video, we will use Excel's data analysis tool to do hypothesis testing for the case of sigma unknown. Remember, for sigma unknown, we use S as a point estimator for sigma, and we use the T table instead of the Z table. The test statistic for mu sigma unknown is as follows. T is equal to X bar minus mu naught. Mu naught is the hypothesized mean divided by S over the square root of N. So let's do an example of a two-tailed test for the population mean mu, sigma unknown. In this example, we're going to see if the mean grade on an exam is 75. Our null hypothesis is the status quo, that the mean is equal to 75, and the alternative hypothesis is that the mean is not equal to 75. Remember, the alternative hypothesis is always counter to the null. Because this is equal to or not equal to, this is considered a two-tailed test, and therefore we have two areas of rejection and one area of non-rejection. So the first step in hypothesis testing is to take a sample. Then we calculate the test statistic, we look up a critical value, and we come to some sort of conclusion. You should be familiar with this technique from a previous lesson or a previous video. The critical value is sort of a cutoff point which separates the rejection and non-rejection regions. So once we calculate the test statistic and look up critical value, we come to a statistical conclusion. Either reject the null hypothesis or do not reject the null hypothesis. Okay, let's take a sample and let's say we have 50 students and the sample grade average on an exam is 78.96 with a standard deviation of 10.7075. So now the next step is to calculate the test statistic and if we were doing this by hand, 78.96 minus 75 divided by S over the square root of N and we get 2.6151. Okay, now we look up the critical value, and to do that we need alpha, so let's say that alpha is 0.05. Because this is a two-tailed test, we split alpha in half, so alpha is 0.025, and we need degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom is n minus 1, 49 degrees of freedom. So, looking up the critical value in the t-table, this is the abridged version of the t-table, so we have 50 degrees of freedom. I don't have 49 degrees on this table. And alpha divided in half is 0.025. And we get a critical value of 2.009.
Okay, so we've looked up the critical value and we found the critical value is 2.009. Now we have to check on the distribution whether the test statistic falls in the rejection region or the non-rejection region. The critical value again is 2.009. The test statistic was 2.6151. And where does that fall? That falls in the tail area and that is the rejection region. So we say reject the null. If we reject the null, that means we found evidence for the alternative hypothesis and so there is evidence that the mean is different from 75. Okay, we go to the Excel spreadsheet. Okay, so we're going to use the data analysis tool to compute um, the test statistic, but before we do that, we need to set up a dummy column here. So let's type in dummy, D-U-M-M-Y, and let's put in some data for the dummy data. Okay, and the reason we have to do that is because you'll see in a moment when we select the data analysis tool, the t-test is only for two sample tests, so we fool or we trick Excel into thinking we have two samples. In order to do this using Excel, we go to the data tab, we click on data analysis, and then we scroll down to where it says t-test, and we're going to use t-test two sample we're going to use t-test to sample assuming unequal variances. So click OK. And for the variable one range, we're going to use our real data, which is grade on exam. So click in the first cell and then press Control, Shift, and Down key to select the entire column. And there you see we have the entire column, C1 through C51. Now let us put in for the variable two range. We don't have variable two. So we're going to use our dummy column, control shift down, and that is L1 through L3. Okay, now click on the box that says labels because we have labels in the first row. And then for the hypothesized mean, we go back to our problem. What did we hypothesize our uh, mean to be? Here we hypothesized our mean to be 75. So let's type in 75 for our mean. 75. So that is our hypothesized mean. And now we can say, okay, we have this in a new worksheet because there's really no room to have it here. So click OK. And there is the output. Now, now let's take a look and see if it gave us the same numbers that we got when we did this by hand. So let's go back and see what we calculated as our test statistic. The test statistic was 2.6151. Okay, let's go back to the Excel spreadsheet and we can see test statistic is 2.6151, which is exactly what we calculated by hand. And if you look up the critical value, you saw we looked it up in the t-table and we found 2.009, so that's the same number. So what you need to do, it doesn't tell you when you run the test, it only gives you the test statistic and the critical value. And so you can see the test statistic is in the rejection region. Or you can use the p-value. Okay, using the p-value approach, uh, for a two-tailed test, what we do is we double the p-value and compare it with all of alpha. And the rejection rule is to reject the null if the p-value is less than or equal to alpha. So let's look up the test statistic. The test statistic was 2.6151. And we look under 49 degrees of freedom, but we don't have 49 degrees of freedom on this table, so let's use 50 degrees of freedom. And now looking for 2.6151, we find that it is in between these two numbers. All right, and then we look up and we see the p-value there. Now, I don't know exactly what the p-value is, but we can double that p-value, and we would know that that p-value is certainly less than alpha because alpha is over here, 0.05, so anything to the right of that is less than alpha. We would reject the null, and we would find that there is evidence that the mean is different from 75. If we go back to the Excel spreadsheet, we can see that the exact p-value is 0.0118, and that is, of course, less than alpha. Alpha was 0.05. So 0 0.01 is less than 0 0.05, and therefore the same conclusion, we reject the null and find that the mean is different from 75. There is evidence that the mean is different from 75. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I hope you...
Okay. So again, uh, what I wanted to uh, share to you is the a t-test is a type of inferential statistic used to determine if there is a significant difference the means of two groups which may be related in certain features. So the t-test is one of many tests used for the purpose of hypothesis testing in statistics. Now, now calculating a t-test requires three key data values. No? The, they include the difference between the mean values from each data set called the mean difference. Of course, the standard deviation of each group and the number of data values of each groups. And there are several different types of t-tests that can be performed depending on the data and type of analysis. Okay. 